say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Baiters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn, kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in town Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Hello, Mrs. Farmer. How are you? I like my... Canadian tuxedo. I like it. It's very nice. <laughs> Thank you very much. Look who's behind us. Just chowing away. Aren't they loud? <laughs> you know what? Mo, the little black Angus cross from the Brown Swiss Mama, we planned on taking a 700 pound calf in. Right. But it's so wet we can't get a trailer in here. So he's growing, isn't he? So we're going to have a 900 pound calf, which hey, that's okay too. Yeah. And you know the little guy who we really worried about at first, he's done so Here's well. He's probably, I bet he's five and a half right now. Yeah. So this again, is not a way to have cheap meat. On the theme song that I wrote a long time ago, the part that goes about slashing your grocery prices, right. that does not apply to them. Because you feed them too good. <laughs> I feed them too good. But you know what? To, to have the peace of mind to know where your beef comes from, right. to know what's in it or not in it, we know. Right. We really, really know. We got a jam-packed show for you tonight. Um, let's say that you're out fishing, okay. which we plan on doing a lot of. Uh, we'll probably be at Lake Cumberland more this summer. Full of striper. Mm -hmm. Some of the best eating in the world. If you go to major restaurants in New York, Los Angeles, that's a delicacy. Really? Striped okay. bass or striper. We're going to talk about blackened seasoning, the history of that, right. and why we're going to use it today, and some sides. We've got decent weather. Yay. Again, one day. We one can't day. take the cameras out in the rain because they would melt and Kelly right. would be mad. That's right. And that would be bad. It would be bad. So we do have one day. That's right. One break. And we're going to go up here and take advantage with some cowboy cooking. So let's go up the hill. Did you just realize that we're outside? I like this. This is not fabulous. One day. Does it make you think about spring? Yes. I think we, I'm glad we're up on a hill because we might float away. There's That's so true. much water. I'm so <laughs> sick of mud and rain. It is and muddy. Mud and rain, but it's right around the corner. Yeah. Right around the corner. But we do get the cowboy cook today. We got some water boiling. We I got see that. that. We got that mm -hmm. going for us. That's good. Now, you've seen us striper fish before. Here's a clip from Kentucky afield. Now, while you're watching us pull these huge fish in here, I did this for about 20 years. It was a great job. The resources are great here. But we like to bring as much food to the table as we possibly can that we right. have caught or that we have raised mm -hmm. in a garden or raised animal-wise as we can. Let's talk about these striped bass. Beautiful, wonderful fish. In Kentucky, they can get up to 30, 40, 50, 60 pounds. Wow. Huge animals. Now, the thing about these stripers in their natural area, mm -hmm. it's on the east coast around the Gulf around that area. Now they moved them since then out to the west coast and all over the United States in some lakes. I think they started out in Santee Cooper in South Carolina. Really? Our biologist, fisheries biologist, and Hope Carlton and a crew went down to Santee Cooper and caught hundreds of them. Mm -hmm. Wow. South Carolina let us bring those back. Now these fish are anadromous. What's that mean? That means that in their normal areas, if they're doing what they want to do, they're like a salmon. They go from salt water to fresh water to spawn hmm. and then back. Okay. They can live to be about 30 years old, which means they attain great size. And down in the tailwaters in Cumberland, you know, they catch them up to 60 pounds. Wow. Now that's a big animal. That's big. And a lot of people think this meat would not be that good to eat, but let me differ with you. It is white and flaky. We like it. It is delicious. Mm -hmm. I made some with Roddy and Lisa not here too long ago. That was made so a little butter, good. lemon sauce. That was delicious. Yeah. But today we're gonna borrow from Paul Prudhomme. Now he was down there, he was a Cajun guy. You know, he was a PBS cooking show host. Really? Yes, back in the day. And 
he came up with blackened seasoning. He almost destroyed the redfish population. <laughs> now, you'd look at a red drum or a redfish that are all around, around the uh, east coast and south. These fish, and all the way back up in the Gulf, these fish were once considered eh, like a carp. You catch them, you have fun with them. Right. Until Paul came up with blackened seasoning. Once that took off and people started catching red drum and they wanted to blacken them, they had to start putting limits on these fish because really? people really enjoyed the taste of those red drum when they were blackened we so on and so forth. So tonight we're going to make a whole feast. We're going to make all the sides and everything, which we like to do. Yeah, and we're starving. When we can get outside. Yeah. And this is fairly quick. Say, say you're fishing. Now everybody carries a cooler with him when you go fishing. So right. carry these ingredients. Always have your, always have your cast iron with you. That's right. You never know That's when right. you might need to break a fire out and start one very easily. So off to the side, we got some water boiling for our broccoli. We're gonna show you what we're doing here, but first let's get our cornbread mix started. And for campfires and convenience sake, and Dutch oven cooking, I'm gonna take a packet. Oh yeah. And in this case, since we're hungry, let's take two of these. Right. This is why I always wanna bring my handy dandy mix. It's, it's already pre-measured out. All you need to do is add, you can add water. I would prefer myself to add buttermilk. buttermilk. And here I'd say we're at least a cup and a half, maybe more till you get about this consistency. Maybe put a little bit more in there. I got this in bear camp. I was in Canada a few years ago. Here's a picture of the bear that I took. A great big old bear. He was a pope and young bear. Shot him with my teeth, with my bow. Was that not some of the best meat that was you've amazing. ever had? It was amazing. Now when I talk to Phil Weisenberger, and he's talking about the cornbread mix, he likes buttermilk. Always, they all use buttermilk. <laughs> yeah, His mom buttermilk. has buttermilk. Let's cut, cut up some of those jalapenos. Right. This is a bear camp cornbread. Now some pieces of bacon would go good in this too. If we had some cracklings, which we did a, a while back. We're gonna start referring back to things that we've already done and show you a quick clip of that because all this stuff you can go back and reference. All right, now look what we have here. Wow. That actually makes a noise. You hear it sighing and hissing and popping towards the end, you know you're there. That's amazing what it did. It's like little potatoes. Here. Can I eat those? Yeah, you can eat them. So these are what everybody's heard about the cracklings. And that's the noise they make while they're cooking over the top of the lard. Now, when we get this all off, we're gonna ladle this up and put it in small jars. Because, you know, typically when we're cooking with lard, it's we're cooking with it in the bottom of a pan, like you would use vegetable oil right. or whatever. And this is a small batch, of course, because we're just showing you how we do it. But the next step now is to set these aside. You'll take you some cheesecloth. We'll use two or three layers. Put you a strainer, pour it into your jar, and basically let it sit there till it cools, and then it will kind of become like baking grease. Now, that is mm. not the white clear stuff, but, okay, Taryn. Mm. 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 I could eat these. <laughs> okay, so we got enough for maybe one more jar. Let's okay. do another jar. What we're gonna do right here, we're gonna take our cracklings, just because we can't resist it. We're gonna pour them off in a skillet. And take some salt. And we're just basically gonna turn these over and get them nice and crisp. You talk about good, man. You put cracklings in cornbread, are you kidding me? I like onions too. When you render your lard down, you end up with cracklings. That's good. That's a crackling press up on the porch there. They would squeeze every bit of stuff they could get out of there for their lard. And you know why they wanted their lard, because it's precious stuff. Oh yeah. That's good. Is that good enough? Yep. Now these are not the hot ones. These are the mild jalapenos. So I'm not gonna burn my eyes out? No, you won't burn your eyes out. Let's add about, I don't know, four or six ounces of corn, not the whole thing. A little bit of corn. No more. That gives you some nice consistency. Let's cut that onion up, about half that onion. All right. Put that onion in there. Whether you think this is a sin or not, <laughs> if you don't want to put sugar in it, don't. I want to. I like sugar. Sugar's not a sin. Sugar's good. We're gonna good. put some sugar in here. If you can't use sugar, don't. If you don't want to use sugar, don't. But if you can imagine, so this good. tastes more like a dessert 
once you get the corn, the sweet, and the corn, the jalapenos, and the sweet onions in there, let me tell you what, this is hard to beat. Mm -hmm. So, 10 inch pan, 450 degrees wow. for 10 to 15 minutes. We're gonna keep our eye on this because we don't want it to burn. So if you had to guess for 450 degrees on a 10 inch pan. I would go 19 and 10. That's what that's what my brain's telling you me. You are so smart. Super it just came to me. Farmer. So, thank you. Now what level are we at today? Are we at tenderfoot, cowpoke, or ranger? We're on the cowpoke side of things. Okay. You know what? This is this is a good solid mill. You know, so a couple things are in packages. Mm -hmm. So if it was really complicated, we'd go on up to Ranger. But but today it's a good, good solid cow poke. Now, Mrs. Farmer, we also have water on the boil. So in a second, what I would like to do is take the heads of these off. Okay. And drop those in there. We don't have to get those terribly boiled. We want to have a little bit of crunch to them because we're going to make our side out of broccoli. If I said cheddar cheese, would it make you happy? I love cheese. Everybody likes cheese. We're just gonna take it over and drop it in. All right, so blackened seasoning. Okay. Now this is pretty close to Paul Prudhomme's original seasoning. I think he put this in a cookbook back in the 80s. A lot of people have taken his recipe and changed it around a little bit, but that's, that's where it started. Let's start with two and a half teaspoons of salt. One full tablespoon of paprika. A teaspoon of onion powder. A teaspoon of garlic powder. Now on your cayenne pepper, you want it hot, go a teaspoon. If you want it less, go half, three quarter. Three quarters of a teaspoon of black pepper. Three quarters of a teaspoon of white pepper. Now you know the thyme. Mm -hmm. That's what you really taste in there. So we're gonna go a half a teaspoon of thyme half a teaspoon of dry oregano. Then we're gonna go a half a teaspoon of fennel, and that's what we've added. And I took my fennel seeds and I just basically, it takes a little work, I ground them up there, but I think it adds a nice little taste to it. So we're gonna take all those ingredients, we're gonna put them in our little bowl. We're gonna take our filet, we're gonna cut it into good serving type pieces. We're gonna cut any red meat off that might be there, that's the strong meat. Butter, I wish you could smell this. And we're gonna get those Spices all over that. And we're going to take a hot skillet. I mean a hot skillet, no oil. We're going to set that on the fire. Then we're going to take our fish. We're going to pop it in there. We're talking about a minute and a half per side. When you pop it in there, you take a dollop of butter, melted butter, and put it in there. It's going to flare up a little bit, but that's going to help get that taste and caramelize everything on there. About a minute and a half per side, then you got you some blackened striper. Now again, this is popular down on the coast with redfish, but Mm, 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 mm. You've had blackened trout, you've yeah. had blackened everything just about. All right, for a side, big russet potato. Simple. I'm going to start peeling my potato. Now this was actually in your grandmother's restaurant. Right. These are her potato cakes that she would make. And my mom says she would make them at the house for the kids too. And I can't believe I haven't made these. This, I made them the other day and they're delicious. Well, they're super simple. And there's, yes. I mean, there's, you could use like store-bought hash browns, right. whatever you want. She said fresh potato. That's how she made well, it. That's, it tastes better. Everything's right. better with fresh potato. And this one potato will make about five little cakes. Now, we got our broccoli sitting here. We took it off. Mm -hmm. It's soft enough. We've got our cornbread coming along nicely. I'd say another five minutes, we'll check it. So the goal is to get everything kind of together right. in the same amount of time. So this what are you we're just gonna now? brown up now. We're just gonna shred this whole potato. Oh, watch your finger. I'm gonna take a hunk of the apple. Mm. Fix me up. All right. Now, a little bit of onion. That's and what however, I'm talking about. However much you like. And I like to shred it because it makes it littler. And that's all you're liking. What do you think, good enough? I like it. All right. And then she said she'd take one egg. These are our chicken eggs. And I almost forgot, we got a little salt and pepper on this. Oh yeah. And we hit carry our industrial size. <laughs> we cook a lot, so we always have lots of uh, yeah. spices around. And she would mix this up. I'm gonna mix it up with my hands. Took my ring off. And we're gonna add a little bit of flour. Just firm things up. Yeah. And I tried it a bunch of different ways. I had just a little flour, extra. Didn't It still tasted wonderful. So was too much flour. Also, well, I'll let you decide how much you think I need. You want me to just put it in there for you? Yeah. Can I use my fingers? Yep, you sure can. And it just helps it. You can tell me what you think. All right. Go ahead and put all that in. All right. And actually put a little, little bit more. A little more? Maybe, yeah. And mom didn't have <laughs> measurements. She just said it was, this is just how she did it. Did it different every time. So now we're going to get a pan. 
We're going to just make these into little balls. We're going to put them in there, smush the balls down, and flip them a few times, and you're going to have little tiny potato cakes. They're going to be wonderful. Smash gonna, them down. The crispy is as you want them. Just keep going until then. I like the sound of that. A little salt, a little pepper, a little bit of butter. That butter's good for you, you know. Yum. Do you hear the sizzle? I do. The continuous, never-ending sizzle. Oh, that smells so good. Coming back with a little cheddar cheese, a little Parmesan. This is Farmer, would you like some more cheese? I always love cheese. You can uh, never have enough cheese. Is our fish almost done. Let's set this over here and let it melt just a little bit. I'm Lardo. And I'm Burley. And we're, we're the, the Moron, Moron Brothers. Brothers. Got a frog in my throat. He talked about Uncle Ben there. Uncle Ben, uh, he was bad to make moonshine. And uh, uh, he, he, he done it a lot. He was good at it, but uh, it finally killed him. They used to dig a big pit in the ground, line it with plastic, and that's where they'd put their their mash and let it work, you know, let it make uh, alcohol in this big pit. He drowned in that pit of, in that big pit. It, it drowned and had to go tell Aunt Judy and Daddy's the one told Aunt Judy, said that Uncle Ben was drowned in that big pit of mash up there. She said, Lord have mercy, bless his heart. Said, I feel so bad for him. Daddy said, you shouldn't because he got out three times to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Sean E. Creek. All right, man. Well, down the river, Sean E. Creek, and a fella called Muskrat Dan. He lived on the water with a pretty little daughter, and a lord, he's a mean old man. I slipped down and visited with her, and he's out checking his trap line. If he ever catches me, he'll have my hide to grind. I'm going down to Shawnee Creek, take my pole and gun. Do a little hunting and fishing, see my gal and have some fun. Sometimes I rise up catfish, coon, muskrat, and squirrel. It's always cornbread and wild green. Man, I love that girl! Where's a red bandana in her hair? I know where the path is gone. If I don't see a red bandana there, that mean old man is home. I pull my boat up on the bank and I hide there in the weed. Sometimes sticks have a day for that old man to leave. I'm going down to Shawnee Creek, take my pole and gun. Do a little hunting and fishing, see my gal and have some fun. Sometimes you fry the crappie, deer meat, rabbit, or quail. It's always cornbread and wild green. Man, I love that gal! Gonna build us a little old shanty boat and make her my reverend queen. Every day we'll eat a different kind of meat with a cornbread and green. I'll have to face old muskrat Dan, hope he don't draw his gun. He won't be losing his pretty little daughter, just have me for a son. I'm going down to Shawnee Creek, take my pole and gun. Do a little hunting and fishing, see my gal and have some fun. Sometimes he cooks me a big old carp, possum or beaver tail. It's always cornbread and wild green. Man, I love that gal! try wow. first the fish we had to rip this stuff off here look at how white wow. and flaky mm -hmm. wow that was good that's ridiculous mm -hmm. tonight we decided to cook over the fire 
I much love it. It just adds that little bit of hickory flavor. That fish is impossible to beat. I see why they almost killed all the poor redfish down there. The cornbread is like all the potatoes are outstanding. Good oh, the cornbread's really good. And Grandma Calacrinus. Mm. That was good. Wow. Let me tell you what. That's my kind of eating. Mm -hmm. All right, let's chew. Let me tell you what. This state is so blessed with resources. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take all the striper I can. I got friends who don't eat it. And they give it to you. I love they that. They give it to yes. me. I'm like, that's this, good. You have so many ways to cook it. That's amazing. Look, I want you to look that's at good. this. I want you to look at something right here. I want you to look at that wow. meat right there. Look at the consistency. That's striper. That's what people think are junk fish. That's what you would go to a restaurant in New York and pay a big bunch of money for. Flaky, tender. Delicious. Mm. No strong taste. Your seasoning's perfect. Mmm. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> now, you see us cooking outside today. Hopefully, we're doing a lot more. Right, the weather. The sky closes. Millions and gazillions and quadrillions of recipes we have. Where would you find those? TimFarmersCountryKitchen.com. Click on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Boom, all kinds of recipes there. Also, when you do that, hit subscribe. That way, when a new segment comes out, you're notified. I get it immediate. Oh, man. Yum. Oh man, so okay. simple. Black and seasoning in your own home. You can make it, there's nothing to it. What I do, if I know I got a bunch of fish coming, right. is I make a big batch of it. I'll take one of those containers that are mm -hmm. empty and put about that much in there. That'll do you for you know eight or 10 oh, settings, yeah. depending on when you got people coming over or not. Facebook, if you wanna be our Facebook friend, what would you do, Ms. Farmer? I'd hit like. Just boom, hit like, you're on. We talk about recipes, we have people post their recipes, we share ideas, we talk about all kinds of stuff. Sadly, the sun's about to drop over the hill. That's right. And I'm and starving. Let's, uh, let's, ooh, do I hear the sound of dum, dum, dum. I hear the sound of hooves. Yeah. I think let's go out on a little cowboy yodeling here. It's been that kind of day. This week has been a wonderful outdoor experience. Next week, who knows? That's right. But we got a brand new show. Until then, it's all about good times. Good friends. And good eats. We'll see you next mm. week. We have been catering for a lot of years, and I wanted everything to have a specific taste. Therefore, I had to come up with my own products. Right. A dry rub, chow chow, and our barbecue sauce are something that we use in all our catering gigs. I developed this barbecue sauce that is not the th really thick, syrupy stuff that you get. This is, has more of a natural, it's got some pepper and onion flavor, and you can actually see the particulates in there. You know, a lot of people are asking what we use our dry rub on. Now, obviously, pork and chicken are two of the more common things. Also, we've been using on our corn on the cob with butter. That is and telling you, this That's stuff wonderful. with potatoes is fantastic. So 40 years in the making, Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen Dry Rub. Mm -hmm.